Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Portainer on a Kubernetes cluster using Helm. I'm going to be using the official Portainer Helm chart, and to give you some additional context, the Kubernetes cluster is a K3S cluster running on Raspberry Pis. Before we start the installation, I want to give you a quick overview on what Portainer is. Portainer provides a web-based interface for managing containers, images, networks, and volumes. Sometimes it can be difficult to interface with a Kubernetes cluster through the command line, and it's nice to have a GUI interface to see an overview of the current status of the cluster and the resources within the cluster. Portainer is a very powerful platform, but it's also very lightweight. It has a simple, easy-to-use interface, and it's also possible to manage multiple clusters uh, through a single instance of Portainer. So let's get started with the installation. I'm going to navigate to the Portainer documentation. And the uh, documentation is located at docs.portainer.io. Now, once you've navigated to the documentation pages, you'll just want to scroll down to the Getting Started section. And then under Getting Started, I'm installing the Community Edition of Portainer. So you'll want to expand this dropdown. And then under, uh, under this dropdown, we're going to select uh, Kubernetes, and then install Portainer Community Edition on your Kubernetes environment. And that should take you to this page. I'm going to be installing the Helm chart with an ingress, uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to. There are other options uh, for installing the Helm chart without an ingress, um, but the one that I'm going to choose is uh, this one right here. So if I go down to the deployment section, uh, deploy using Helm, and it uh, gives me the commands for adding the Portainer uh, repository. But then under here, we can expose the Portainer uh, service via node port, via ingress, or via load balancer. Uh, I'm going to be using this uh, selection right here, expose via ingress. So when we install the Helm chart, it's going to create an ingress for our Portainer instance. And I have a traffic ingress controller. So I'm going to update, rather than passing these arguments directly into the Helm install command, I'm going to slightly modify the uh, values.yaml file uh, for this Helm chart. Now you can get a copy of the values.yaml file from the uh, Portainer repository, uh, Kate's repository. So if you just Google search uh, Portainer and Helm chart, it should take you to this repository right here, Portainer, uh, under the Portainer org, and then the Kate's repository. And here you'll be able to find the uh, values.yaml file under charts and then Portainer. So let's take a look at the values.yaml file uh, for Portainer. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Uh, and there's not too many changes that we need to make. Um, just remember, in my case, I'm going to be enabling uh, ingress for uh, Portainer. Um, but Basically, we'll leave a lot of this the same. So I'm not going to uh, enable Enterprise Edition. Uh, I'm going to leave the image the same. Uh, the node selector is something that I did modify because I wanted to pin uh, Portainer to a particular node. Uh, and I'm using a local uh, provisioner. Um, so I'm using like the default storage class with K3S. And... Uh, to avoid having like, since it's going to be like on one node, right? Uh, the data is going to be on just one node. If Portainer has to be restarted, I want it to be pinned to a particular node so that it has access to uh, the data. Uh, so this is one thing that uh, we need to modify. Uh, at least in my case, I wanted to modify it. And then for the service definition, we'll modify the type of service uh, to be cluster IP. So. Uh, as it says here for ingress, set the type of type to be cluster IP and then enable uh, ingress to be true. I'm going to leave uh, TLS uh, false and then we'll enable uh, the ingress to be true and we'll uh, specify a host path. So I've set up uh, my cluster with a DNS server and also the ingress controller in a way that I can access pretty much any service in my uh, cluster through uh, the domain cluster.local. Uh, so it'll be like service name dot cluster dot local. In this case, the service name uh, would be Portainer. So it'd be Portainer dot cluster dot local. 
And we'll see that in a minute. I also adjusted the size to a smaller amount. I think I set it to like two gigabytes. Um, so how do we get this on our machine? Uh, if I select raw, we can just uh, curl the raw file to the, to the local machine. I'm gonna navigate to VS Code. I'm gonna copy this URL and then nav navigate to VS Code where I'm connected to a virtual machine on my Windows host. And um, I've already downloaded the values.yaml file for Portainer, uh, but if I wanted to re-download it, I would just do curl dash uh, ol and then insert, and that should download the values.yaml file to my local machine. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and open up uh, the uh, values.yaml file in your preferred editor. I have it opened in VS Code. And uh, let's just walk through the changes that I made in the values.yaml file. So most of this is unchanged. Um, and then you'll notice under node selector on lines 22 and 23, I've uh, specified that it should be um, deployed only to uh, my Raspberry Pi node zero. Uh, so this should pin the uh, portainer uh, uh, pods to this particular host. And again, I'm doing that because I'm using like the default storage class that's going to be like host path uh, or something like that. So it's going to create the data on a specific node. And um, when Portainer restarts, I need it to be pinned to that node so that it has access to the data. Now down on line 29, I've modified the service. Uh, so I've just simply changed the type from, uh, I believe it was set to node port to uh, cluster IP since we're going to be enabling ingress. And then under the ingress settings on line 51, I've set it to true. I've left the ingress class name uh, blank um, and I haven't um, added any annotations here. Under the host, I've added my what my host name will be. And again, I've configured my DNS. Uh, my, I have a DNS mask server running and, um, and I've configured my like clients on my home network to uh, to uh, utilize that DNS. So uh, anytime uh, I'm accessing a dot close cluster dot local uh, domain, uh, it gets routed to my ingress, my traffic ingress controller. And then traffic based off of the service name will route it to the backend service. So in this case, uh, the name of the service will be Portainer. Um, and so it should route it to the Portainer service. And then the final change that I make is just to uh, drop the, the size for the persistent volume claim uh, down to two gigabytes from 10. Um, I don't really need, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of data, I don't think. Um, and this seemed to run fine for my specific use case. You may not want to change that uh, depending on your use case. And if you're using a different storage class than I am, like I'm using the default, like host path type a storage class that's um, that comes with Kubernetes, then you'll have to specify that here and configure it accordingly. So now that we have the values.yaml file modified, um, we want to add the Helm chart repository and then install the Helm chart and reference the values.yaml file that we uh, modified here uh, so that it can, it can properly deploy Portainer to our cluster. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom left here, I have K9 set up and uh, we can see the namespaces in my in my cluster. I've already created a namespace called Portainer, but when we use the uh, Helm install command, we will pass in the, the option to create the Portainer namespace if it's not already created. So I'm going to go back to uh, the instructions on setting up uh, Portainer. And uh, as if we walk through the Helm install command, you'll see the create namespace flag. Um, and the uh, namespace is Portainer. Uh, the release is called Portainer. And then the Helm chart uh, repository is the Portainer uh, repository. So let's go up here to these two lines and first uh, add the repository, the Helm uh, repo repository. So I'm just going to copy that in and hit enter. I already have it, so it's uh, skipping it. And then Helm repo update to make sure that we have the latest. 
Okay. So when I run this um, Helm install command, I don't, since we've modified the values.yaml file, I don't have to pass in uh, these, um, these options um, or these arguments since they were already set in the values.yaml file. I just have to specify the values.yaml file in, um, in my Helm install command. So uh, I already have it up here. Um, so we have Helm install, uh, create namespace, and then the namespace name is Portainer. The re Helm release is called Portainer, and then we're specifying the Portainer repository. And then finally, we're specifying the values.yaml file using the dash dash values um, uh, option. So I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm also going to go into the Portainer namespace so that we can see the pods that get created in the uh, Portainer namespace. Okay, and you can see that the Portainer pod uh, is starting up. So it looks like it's running, and uh, the other thing that I want to do is just show the traffic dashboard so that you can see that the ingress and the route got created. Uh, in traffic. So if I navigate um, to a new tab here, I'm going to go to my traffic dashboard. And then we will go to HTTP. And then we have HTTP routers. And you'll see here at the bottom, I have the portainer.cluster.local. Um, so if I were to uh, navigate to um, this uh, URL, I should be able to access it. Now, I haven't configured um, my host machine to utilize my DNS mask uh, DNS server. So I'm going to open up my virtual machine, which does have access to that. Uh, I have configured it to utilize the DNS mask server. And uh, I'm just going to go to portainer.cluster.local. And we're um, presented with uh, the setup page where I create a new admin user. And I'm going to go ahead and create that user. And under the quick setup page, I can specify to add a specific environment, a, a remote environment that this Portainer instance is not running. Uh, on so um, like a remote Kubernetes cluster uh, or I can utilize the local environment that the Portainer instance is currently running on and that's the one that I'm going to use so I'm going to select get started and now on this home page I can see a list of available environments that I'm connected to which the only one right now is the local Kubernetes environment that Portainer is deployed to um, and I can uh, open up that environment and uh, see all of the resources that are deployed within that environment, the namespaces, config maps and secrets, volume, uh, the applications. Uh, so if I just kind of drill down here into namespaces, for instance, I can see a, a list of all the namespaces. Uh, if I look at the default namespace, I can see uh, details. Uh, as well as the applications that are running within that namespace. So I have a private registry uh, running within the within the namespace. And I can see its configuration and uh, look at events. I can see the YAML of the of this particular deployment. I can also see ingresses uh, within the cluster. So you can see I have uh, an ingress for Portainer for my private registry and for a simple hello world application uh, that I built. And if you want to, you can also open a kubectl shell uh, that uh, connects you to the cluster uh, where you can execute uh, kubectl commands. So that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple installation process if you're using the Helm chart. Um, if you didn't want to follow like the exact same method that I was, uh, by creating an ingress and maybe you don't have an ingress controller, um, you could utilize a node port, for instance, if you still wanted to have access to Portainer outside of the cluster, like maybe the cluster is running on a different machine than 
uh, like your home desktop machine and you want to connect to the, the cluster remotely, uh, you could utilize node port or just use uh, the uh, the default um, service that they had set up like cluster IP where it's only accessible within the cluster, but um, you'd probably want to utilize like at least node port. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Um, and if you have any, uh, you know, video requests related to what we were doing in this video, uh, also please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching.